access to the results. What's my incentive though if I'm uh, HP? That's what I'm saying. It may not have a way to stand on it. Exactly. So why not have part of the You can write it into a contract. No, what yeah, I would do yeah. is part of, no, no, part of the <laughs> CDA <laughs> process is independent verification validation, right? <clears throat> so why not have an independent come in to oversee and say, no, no, this is being done. This is not being done. And if you know they don't have contractors talking, it's the perfect time to make sure you're out with them. Are they doing a good job or not? Yeah. Good. Also, yes. penetration test. Yeah, uh, no one isn't from ATF. I have a kind of a unique set of experiences since I spent 10 years and I'm a retired EDS, but I'm now a federal person for the last eight years. So I, Welcome to the bright side. Yeah, so, I, so, I, so, I, so I've either been on the evil side, you know, it depends on your, but, but I, have, I have four things that have kind of worked for me as a, both as a contractor and as a Fed. And, and the first one is, is that the, the entire profit of, the, of your vendor should be at risk. Okay. Number two, the the SLA. Some of them should be objective, like uh, number of help desk tickets that are you know customer satisfaction. But what we did was what we did at NASA was is that we had a board that met every six months, and and, and about a little more than half of that profit. And, you know, and, and when you're talking about it, in this case, it was a million dollars of the profit a year. So about half a million of that profit <coughs> at, at NASA was at risk every six months, and it was. Sort of subjective. I mean, and, and I'd be willing to share the actual per, uh, performance review plan that we had. So, it, as a result, it made the contractor very pliable to suggestions about how to how to do things. The second thing is is that is that while a lot of the contract was for a fixed price, there was a significant part of it that was cost plus. Mm -hmm. Because what we found was is that it, what we found was is that if you really want the very best, you're not going to get that under firm fixed price because there's too much competition. Among vendors for the and, first, and if you want to get, and I want to confirm what he just said. Because if you really want, if you want, the, if you want that senior oracle guy in tomorrow, when we know how hard that is because of security clearances, you need to be able to offer that guy the four hundred dollars an hour that he's go, he or she is going to get as a commercial person. And then the third thing is, is that is, is that we're getting ready at ATF to redo our thing, and the way we decided to uh, try to do the best job of avoiding protests is going with FedSim. Because they have so much experience in doing this now that, and, and, you know, and they've got the contract vehicles that I think they have a very low rate of protest at this point. And then the last thing, this is something that we, again, we did at NASA, is that uh, we have, we wrote into our uh, task order for Odin. Odin is their big contract that's ending any day now. But back when I was at NASA, we were redoing the, the work orders. Mm -hmm. We wrote into the task order that the contractor had the same had had the same level of risk that we had. So in other words, if the Fed cert says this is a, a, an extremely high, that's their level of risk that they have to live with. And then we gave them certain, you know, in other words, and, and the key is because if you don't write that, if you don't write, they will choose a different level of risk because in a firm fixed price, they're going to say, well, yeah, okay, we can have a little bit more risk. And you don't want them to have that. You want them to have the same level. You want to write into the contract the exactly the same level of risk mm -hmm. that you've got so that it forces mm -hmm. them with the SLAs and with the mm -hmm. every six months. You know, you didn't, I don't think you really chose, you under, I don't think you understood my level of risk. And so we're going we're gonna to penalize you on that. And, and actually, there's a fifth thing. You have got to be willing to give them a zero as a performance. We actually gave a zero. For a whole year. Now, this was the, sm the smaller of the two contracts, so it was only three hundred thousand dollars. When you give a contractor a three hundred thousand dollars zero at the end of the year for a profit, uh, they will make changes. Now, in most cases, we only most cases that we we, we gave us you know we gave sixties and seventy five. In general, their average was the low ninety because they got the word and they figured out hey we 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 don't like getting zeros and and. Mm -hmm. and You've got to be willing. You've got to be willing to enforce that, and you've got to have the processes and procedures set up to to, to make sure that there's nothing they can do about it. So there's my ten cents. Thank you very much. Well, I was uh, doing a contract before I left, and uh, one of the things I put into it, but it was a security management contract. What I put in was I would use Prisma, uh, which is from NIST. Uh, and said that they, what they would do is measure where we were at when they initially came on and that I expected to see 
pro uh, progressive in uh, increase in security <coughs> by that grading method uh, over the five years of the contract. And if they didn't, it was a year to year, and if they didn't make progress, I could terminate the contract. <coughs> You could also do the same thing with uh, uh, the capability and maturity model. Mm -hmm. They have to, uh, you know, that gives you uh, a metric to build on. Mm -hmm. And Carnegie Mellon also has a maturity model. Right. So what you're saying That's what is, I'm saying, is yeah, establish a baseline and then measure improvement. Right. We, right. I'm, I'm from TSA. So transportation? I mean, the Transportation Security Administration. And yes, we just did a, a wonderful big guest that got wonderfully written up. And um, if you want, we can talk okay. you know, later offline. And the, the statement of work with all the requirements mm -hmm. was, was not part of what was protested, plus it's a little hard. And um, but we placed a lot of, there was a lot of emphasis on the SLAs. Mm -hmm. There was also a lot of emphasis in the evaluation um, on the, um, I'm going to say on the SSP, that they had to prove that they understood our environment and that they were, um, uh, that the, um, was going to understand the threats. Mm -hmm. The other thing you want to add are architecture, security, and technology refresh clauses if it's a long-term contract. Yeah. And you want to force that they are actually keeping you up to date, not only from a technology perspective, but from an architecture perspective. So is your business model five years from now still effective based on whatever five years from now best practices are? Mm -hmm. I will tell you that we actually do have that in there. No, it's not great, but it's it's at least in there. Um, some of our problems do come back to us. <laughs> you know, they're ready to go, and we won't. So I can't I can't really blame them for that. <laughs> um, so I think you guys have helped me answer how to construct SLAs and how to reward good behavior. Um, and actually, the flip side of that is how to punish non-performance. Well, there's a huge art. I mean, we're, we're going through that argument now because you managed to meet the metric. Mm -hmm. You really managed to meet the metric. Okay? And any metric, <coughs> there are very few metrics that stand in place for 18 months. Okay? I mean, like, let's just face it. So if you're writing a contract that you expect to stay in place for five years, you have to pump up. It, it takes two to four years to put one of these acquisitions in place. So when you write the SLA, it's going to, you're going to live with it for nine years. Okay, phrase this. Which so, is why we wound up putting, yeah. So what is the phraseology you're going to build in? Because I know in 12 months, we're going to have a different method. That was why we put so much emphasis on the SSP, and we put the, the security plan. Yeah, on the security plan. Okay. Yeah, and then in the evaluation factors for the whole overall contract, that was one of the huge. Okay. One of the really, really huge. It's right. funny the gentleman from the ATF mentioned some of our contracts. They kind of put our feet to the fire that we did disaster recovery for them. So every year before our, our option year got extended, we'd have to walk over the power source, turn it off. Mm -hmm. If it picked up and operated fine, we got extended. If it didn't, we we're done. So, yeah, it was performance based. And I got to tell you what, it was, it was nervous, but it's a small company like 